Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an and also it's articulated in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't value the dunya that the worldly life it doesn't have any uh, real substance and meaning to Allah He created it and we benefit from the many blessings that are contained within it in the Barakah but what the real value comes from our adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and the righteous deeds that we do and having taqwa that's those are the real beneficial things and dhikr Allah that's one of the uh, greatest things that you can do is making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he said, kafir. That this life is the prison of the believer and the paradise of the disbeliever. And we know where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَذَرَ الْحَيَاةِ dunya That they prefer the life of this world, or he prefers the life of this world, that this is mithmun, this is something sinful. So it's sinful to have your heart consumed by worldly things, and it's sinful to allow for the dunya to distract you from the hereafter. But however, I want to encourage the youth of Ahl Sunnah to look forward, advance, benefit yourselves, and do khair. And to be positive, not to be pessimistic. Because really, when you're pessimistic and negative, this is not a sign that you're pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who's always negative, complaining, and in a bad situation, and doesn't see positive things, this person is showing a displeasure with Allah Azza wa Jal. And showing a displeasure with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that these are methamum characteristics. These are sinful characteristics. So what I want to advise myself and my brothers and sisters to do is to go forward. And what I mean by that is learn the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and get your share of the dunya. And the reason that is, for example, let me give you one example, which is a crisis in our Western communities, especially in Salafi communities. And that is supporting du'ad. So we have many people, many brothers, especially brothers who went out some out of their own pocket and stuff and they studied and they traveled to different lands to gain some knowledge with no support. And many brothers who went to the Islamic universities, they come back with no support. They come back, either they're dependent upon a, a, a community to support them and pay them maybe a meager wage, maybe pay them something more than that, and they struggle. And it's still a na'mah because Allah favored them with knowledge. But they still have families, still have to, to support their family. Many people aren't even allowed to go into the field they were trained in and endow in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they don't, they don't have the financial means. There's no support. And why I say it's important to have a share in the dunya and to look forward and build yourself and build your communities is because when you have those things, things in place, you can support your support one another. Or the one who goes and studies can be independent. The one who's a businessman who has some wealth and goes and study is generally in a better position than the one who's broke, spent his last penny to go study and runs out of money and he can't continue his studies. Or he continues his studies, but he just has no support and he can't come back, he can't give a dowel. Because this is what you find often is that many people, they just don't have it. They don't have the means. So when you study and do something in the dunya, worldly life, as a means for the hereafter, this is khair adhim. And I want to encourage our youth not to settle for just getting a, a job. You thought it was halal. Even your job is not halal, but you're just uh, digging graves or you're working in grocery stores for the rest of your life and stuff. And this is not to say that those are negative professions. It's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is very difficult to communicate, to build to build a family, to support a family with that, and to help build a community. If you're living from paycheck to paycheck, 
it's difficult to do any of those things. Uh, so I want to encourage our youth to gain trades. I know in America, we have many opportunities. I know brothers, mashallah, now that are plumbers making big money uh, 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 and electricians. A brother I just heard about recently who's finishing an electrician apprenticeship, apprenticeship, apprenticeship program. Alhamdulillah, the ni'mah and then we know those brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, I don't know a lot of Salafis that are advancing themselves, but I know a lot of other Muslims who are non-Salafi who are getting, who are becoming doctors and becoming lawyers and becoming this. And I actually know some Salafi lawyers as well. Very few. I know one particular, and I won't mention his name, but a good brother who's Salafi, who's from my city. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. And don't get mad at me for mentioning your situation. But anyhow, but... He's able to do the things he's able to do. First and foremost, from Allah, the Fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Thani, and secondly, then, because he is well-educated. He's a lawyer. He can have his own practice, and he's hired in one of the, the Gulf countries as a lawyer. He's a professional. He makes good money. He, he can secure himself. He can, he can help out the Dao because of his wealth. He can be a part of so much khair because of his wealth and because of his knowledge, his expertise in the dunya as a lawyer. And I can attest myself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored me to be able to do the things that I'm able to do. Even to be able to have my library. No one helped me build my library. Nobody helped me, gave me one dollar to go study Islam. I sacrificed my wealth and my property and my family and left to go try to study and learn a little bit about Islam and share a little bit of knowledge with people. That was from my own wealth. But it's very difficult for me to come back because there's no support, because I have to do everything myself. And so the one who's independent, who has the means, the financial means, who's... Uh, who has wealth to be able to support the Tao, they're in a great and blessed state. And in fact, if you look, when you if we were to really get into some of the details, some of our scholars, even in places like Yemen, like Imam Mukbil, how do you think Damaj was supported, but he the Imam Mukbil wasn't a person of asking for charity and things, no. But there was people from Ahl al-Khair, wealthy Yemenis that were business people, and wealth, wealthy Salafis in Yemen and wealthy Salafis abroad in other Gulf countries who supported that place and helped expand Damaj. As, and Damaj was a place of, 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 of limited resources, but it was still support. It had to be supported, even in a place like that. So what about in the West? Dawah has to be supported, and you have to support yourself. And this comes, there's nothing wrong with sisters getting educated and sisters working in a halal environment and better in themselves. So I want to encourage again, as I mentioned prior to this, our young sisters to give yourself options. And one thing that amazes me is that you find, and I've met Salafis and Salafi sisters abroad in places like Yemen, which actually surprised me, that were getting educated for a time that I had to teach English there. And it was a mixed class. It was mixed. So yes, I had female students, mashallah, that some were Salafi, mutahajibat, and what I recall in one uh, discussing with one sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve her, and she mentioned that, yes, that, you know, now there were some, you know, it was becoming more of a trend to learn something. She was learning English, her English was good, and she was going, and she was in the university, but she was also mutahajibat, it was very good in adab and everything and not into anything, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, and Salafi as well. And she was uh, being educated. She was educating herself because they knew that a big situation, a big problem in those lands is also divorce. So what is the sister? Yes, the risk is from Allah, but it's about tying your camel too. So I found that there was more of a trend now that women were being educated and learning how to do something so they're not totally dependent on a man in case their marriage fails and in case of which unfortunately is a common thing but i would want my daughters to have the tools to be able to defend themselves not just depend on a man if they got to knock somebody out they need to know how to knock them out uh to be able to you know ha uh, uh to def defend for themselves 
if they marry and then a divorce happens. I want them to be able to, uh, to have the means to be able to care for themselves and if they have children to care for their children and not just be dependent. And so it's very important. I advise the youth, and this is from me, that you gain the tools because that's going to make it easier for you, even the person who wants to go and study, you know, that you have something. What are you going to come back to? You come back to and maybe you've gained some knowledge, but you have to work shoveling and being a, just a, a laborer. And that's not to say that that's negative, but what I'm the point that I hope you understand is that what can you do with that after you have spent that effort in studying and then you're coming back sweeping a broom, using a broom to sweep with, and you can't even work in your field of Tao and you forget your knowledge. We know so many people. Another last point, how many English teachers do I know in, in Saudi Arabia that I've seen over the years who are students of knowledge in the Islamic University? In fact, when I worked in the university, in Taiba University, our whole department was almost the whole English st the speaking staff. We had a major Salafi Jama'at back in those days. Back in those days, there was a lot of the camps were together. Some of the brothers who are very enemies. Now that you see some of those du'at you see on your YouTube and, and out there who are uh, callers, I can name so many people. We work together. We we're all together. And Sheikh Muhammad uh, Jab Jabali, was also, you know, he's a, he's a PhD, he's a doctor in one of the departments. Sorry to ramble on, but I'm just giving you some background. Uh, Muhammad Jabali, and he would come sometimes to visit us. And our whole department was almost, it was majority Salafi, no doubt. Being in Medina, it was all Muslim. And majority of everybody there, in fact, majority of them were Tulab al -Alm. I would say 80% of the brothers were either students still in the university, Jamal Islamiyah, either working on their masters, some of them, and some of them were maybe doing their bachelors, and some of them were, and then others were just students of knowledge who weren't in the university, like myself trying, you know, doing the little bit of student of uh, the seeking knowledge that I was trying to do, as well as other brothers that I know that I won't mention. And the point is, is having those, uh, is to have the support to where you're able to work in the field that you were trained to work in or that you strove to work in to be able, uh, you know, to be able to be supported. And the support is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, so Allah is anything I said that was incorrect. So myself, the Shaitan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam,